All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of get started with today's session here um, and I'll wait to see if uh, anybody joins, has some questions. So um, I thought I would go ahead and continue on talking about the um, uh, the uh, program assignment on, on hashing and dictionaries for our unit 12 here. So um, on Tuesday, we got started with the assignment um, and I walked you through the task one, basically, uh, talking about how the probe function is supposed to work and how the hash function is supposed to work a little bit, right? So just to um, just to review a bit of that, the, the we're using um, um, a, a mid square hashing function. Okay, so we're kind of assuming that the hash keys are integer like or can be treated like integers uh, because the, the basically the mid square hashing means that we first square the value. So if you look at the algorithm given here for the for generating your hash key, you uh, square the key. So that means it has to be something like a like a integer or a number number like. Um, so, so you start by squaring the key. And then uh, we, we take the middle 32 bits. So we treat it like it's a 32 bit integer. Um, and if you follow, there, there's other ways you could do the uh, bit uh, masking here to do this correctly. But um, I suggest that you first mask it by the, the, the uh, do, do a logical and to mask it by 00, zero FF, FF, FF. That, that will zero out the high eight bits of the 32 bits, and then you shift it right, and that will shift over, that, that will shift and fall off the, the, the lowest uh, eight bits. And you'll end up then only having the middle 16 bits, which is what the mid part of the mid square hashing is about, right? So, um, and then after that though, you do have to mod that by the allocation size because you know the, the, the 16 bits, you're, your array for your hash table could only be, you know, uh, have a hundred values in it or whatever the current size is. It, it could be much smaller than after you square and, and, and um, um, take the middle bits. So, so you have to, to mod it by the allocation size, but, but that's basically your, your home index that we're going to use to do the, the probing. Okay. And then the, the, the probe method defines a quadratic probe sequence, right? So we're going to start by using the, the hash as sort of the home hash index. And then we're going to add to that a what I call the probe offset. OK, so uh, maybe I shouldn't have called this index. I, I, I've had a few people asking questions about this. So you should, should maybe think of this as like a sequence number. So you start off with a sequence of zero, with a um, call it a, a value of zero, right? So you, you take the value of zero and, and you plug it into the quadratic uh, formula here, right? So um, um, we're going to take one times the zero squared. So that's going to be zero plus one times zero plus two, right? So when the, the sequence is zero, you get an offset of two. And you basically add that to the home hash key method. And you again have to mod that by the allocation size. Um, but that would be the first value, the first index that you would probe. So, so basically you're adding the probe offset to your home hash uh, index to get the actual index that you're going to probe. Okay? And then if you don't find the value that you're looking for, or if you don't find a free slot at that index, you go to the, the next probe sequence number. So you would go to a probe sequence number one, right? So for probe sequence of one, you would take one times one squared, so you get one, plus one times one, get another one, plus um, two. Um, so that would give you four. Is that right? Um, we, we showed, uh, so for example, the, the uh, tests for the, the, the first test for the um, probe sequence is showing, or you should get a five. Uh, when your um, sequence number is one in, in the probe sequence. So it should be returning a probe offset of five. So, um, oh, so, so yes, yeah, so, so I, C2 is supposed to be two. So you should get one times one squared, so that's one, plus two times one, so that's two, plus two. So, so yeah, you should get five for the, 
when the, the sequence number is one, right? And then so on. When, when the sequence number is two on the probe, uh, you're going to get a probe offset of 10. Remember, you're going to be adding that to the home hash index that you get with the hash function, okay? So that sets us up then to talk about task two. Um, oh, there is one more task one uh, set of tests that you should uncomment. Um, but uh, let's let's start. Let's talk about task two then. Right. So for task two, um, we're again implementing two methods in task two. Let's talk about them one by they're pretty similar, right? So there's probe for available slot and probe for key slot. Okay. So basically the, the difference on these is they're both using the same kind of idea to find something in the hash table. So, so the one, the first one is focused on finding an empty slot. So that's mostly used when we're inserting a new key value pair. We need to probe for a, an available slot. Okay. So, so actually an available slot is either a slot that's empty. Um, or a slot that's had its value, uh, its key value pair uh, deleted. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Right? And the other one is being used more for the search. So, so in that case, we have a particular key that we want to see if it's currently in the hash table. So we want to probe until we find that key or, or until we, the search fails. So that's what the probe for key slot does. All right. Um, so, so yeah, the probe for available slot is searching the hash table uh, using the probe sequence, which, which I'll talk about again here, to find either an empty or a missing slot, okay? So there's kind of two ways that a slot could be available. It could be either um, empty, so nothing had ever been put in, into it, um, or it could be missing, okay? So later on, we have to implement the delete function to delete key value pairs from the dictionary. And the way we do that is, um, um, we set the, uh, the the slot with a special value that indicates um, that it was deleted, um, and we call that um, a missing value. Okay. So let me go over the, the probe sequence again. Um, all right. So um, I've had, had a couple of people asking me about this. You know, so there is some. Um, confusion here, right? So, so like I was saying, maybe I shouldn't have called that probe index, so maybe just like the probe sequence number. So the probe sequence number should go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that's, so that just should increment by one, okay? Um, so let, let's write out that algorithm kind of um, uh, on the whiteboard here. So for, for both of these methods, for task two, um, how we're searching the hash table, both work the same way. They, they have to use the uh, quadratic probe sequence and they have to use the mid key hash function in this particular way. So you always start off by uh, using the hash function to find the home index. Um, so, so I don't know a good name for that, but, but you can start off with um, Um, using the, the mid square hashing function to hash the key, and that gives you a home index. And so remember, if you implemented your hash function correctly, what's returned here is a valid index to the current out to the current um, hash table, right? So the hash table, let's say the allocation size is currently seven. So if the allocation size is currently seven, that means that the hash table has seven slots. Um, uh, and, and they're going to have valid, the, the valid indexes for an allocation size of seven is zero to six. Right. Okay, so that's our hash table of size. So the hash function should use the mid square hashing for whatever the key is. This should be a numeric like value or integer like value. Um, and it's going to return a value between zero and six for an allocation size of seven, or, or value between zero and allocation size minus one, whatever the current allocation size is. Okay? 
So you start with that home index. Now to do the probe um, sequence, um, you need like a, I call it probe index in the um, assignment description, but, but maybe that's a little bit misleading. So I can see that people are thinking of that as an index in the table, but this is just a sequence number. So, so, so maybe I'll call that probe sequence here in this video. And that starts off at zero at the value zero, right? Because we're going to first use the probe function to, for the probe sequence zero, that will return an offset. Okay. So we're going to have some kind of a loop where um, we get our actual hash index We need to add together the home index plus uh, we need to probe so the, the the probe function took the key as the first value that's kind of ignored but, but also we have to pass in the probe sequence So I kind of ran out of room there. So, so but anyway, so you know, the, the probe sequence starts off at zero. So this will give us an offset that we have add to the home index. I'll rename that the home index because that that really could be an index into the hash table. But we're going to add off. We're going to add into the uh, add a probe offset to that, right? Uh, and then we have to be careful because again, after we add in the offset, it could have gone past the end of the table. So if we mod, if we mod that hash index, which is the combination of the home index plus the current probe offset by the allocation size, we will re um, we will re-place um, it back into a, a valid index for the current allocation size, right? Now that then finally is going to be what you're going to be using um, in the two functions for task two. So in the one case, let's say you end up with a hash index at slot two. So in the one case, you'd, you'd be checking if that is either empty um, or missing. Right. And if it's empty or missing, you would stop the loop and you would return that value that you found, the first value that you found along the probe sequence uh, where the slot was empty, right, or missing, um, which, which is indicate the slot where we could insert a new key value pair, right? Or for the other one, when we're searching the, the, the probe for key, we would check that slot to see if it's equal to the key that we're searching for. And if we find it, then, then we would stop the loop and we return that index where we found the key. But if we find um, along the probe sequence, if we find a, a missing or an empty slot, we would also stop the loop, uh, but we would return a failure, right? Um, so in that case, we failed to find the key along the probe sequence, okay? And then in this loop, um, so either we're gonna exit the loop for, for those different kinds of conditions that you got to get correct. Or um, if we weren't done looping, um, that means that we need to check the next slot uh, along the probe sequence. So we want to we want to increment the probe sequence. So, so the, the next time through the loop, we want our probe sequence number to be one. We want to calculate the probe offset for the probe sequence of one, add that to the home index, um, and then check that value, right? So, you know, what that what that does is um, that ends up defining uh, a sequence of slots uh, in the hash table that we're going to be searching uh, either for the key or searching for an empty slot. Um, all right. Then, then when we get to the stopping conditions, 
we stop the loop and, and we figure out what our result was. You know, so either we found the key we were looking for, or we found the empty slot, or our search failed. Right. So I'll talk more about that. But that that's kind of hopefully that helps a little bit. That's that's kind of in a nutshell what the um, the, the the probe sequence is supposed to be doing. Right. Um, and you know, um, we tried to describe that um, in the pseudocode here. So, so the, the pseudocode here is pretty much the same, both for the probe for available slot and the um, uh, probe for key slot. Okay. So, um, so let me go back and um, kind of mention here. So, the, like for the probe for available slot, um, you know, we, we do the things that we that I just said. So, we, we determine the home slot using the hash function. We start at the probe sequence number of zero. Uh, while not done, we, we, we calculate the, I call it the probe slot here. So, so we calculate the, um, the hash index um, or, or the probe slot by adding this home slot and the offset that we get by, um, by calling the probe method on the current probe sequence number, right? Um, remembering to mod that by the allocation size in case we had wrapped past the end of the current um, hash table. So for the probe for available slot, if that, um, what I just called the probe index, if that probe index is empty or missing, then we're done with the loop. And you wanna return that probe index um, as the result of, um, of, of calling the probe for available slot. So probe for available slot, and also probe for uh, key slot, both return an integer index into the hash table, right? So, so, so if, that, if that probe um, slot is currently empty um, or missing, um, then you, start, you jump out of the loop and you return that probe index where you found the first missing or empty value. Okay. How do you determine if a value is missing or empty? Um, you should be using the, uh, the, the key value pair uh, methods for that. So, so let, me, let, me, let me step back and talk about that real quickly. Okay? So if you look at the hash dictionary class, um, it creates uh, a hash table which is a, an array. So it's gonna dynamically allocate this array of key value pair objects, okay? So all of the values in the hash table are key value pairs, right? So you have to look in this class to figure out what you can do with those, um, the, the values, you know, with, with the um, elements in the hash table here. So let's look at the key value pair um, header file. So basically what you want to do for the uh, probe for um, available slot um, is, is um, you know, so remember every one of those uh, indexes in your hash table is one of these key value pairs. So you can ask, uh, you'll have to do both. You have to ask, is it empty or, or is it missing? So uh, if the uh, index is empty or, or, or is missing, then you need to stop the loop and return that um, that value that you found that was um, you know that 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 slot that was uh, either empty or missing right because that's a valid place where I can insert a new key value pair. So so you, you would be using um, so so every value so, so to make it, so I'll make that a little bit more explicit. So for example. In our hash dictionary.cpp, um, in the um, in, in the uh, probe, um, I won't I won't get the uh, the full signature here. So, but like you'll have the probe for available slot, which will be a member function of your hash dictionary, right? But somewhere in there, um, you're going to be testing. So, so. 
you, you've calculated the probe slot, which was, you know, you took the, the home uh, index and you added in the probe offset to get the, the current probe slot. And you have to check. Um, Probe slot is an index in the hash table. The hash table is just an array of key value pairs. So, um, so I can I can index into my hash table. That would give me a particular key value pair, um, and then I can use those methods for the key value pair. So, um, something like that. Right, so, so you can you can look at your hash table, um, should be hash table. Oh, this is undefined because I can't tell that I'm making a member method of my class here. So. So probe for available slot should be a member of the hash dictionary. Uh, but anyway, um, um, you, know, you should be able to look at a particular slot in the hash table that gives you one of these key value pair um, objects. And then from there, you can figure out if it's missing or if it's empty. Or um, for the second method for the task two, um, um, you know, you want to get the key and compare if the key at that slot is equal to the key that you're searching for. Okay. So uh, the probe for key slot method um, has the same function signature um, and it returns, you know, a same valid hash table slot. The difference for this method is that um, instead of stopping when we find an empty or missing slot, um, uh, we want to test if the, 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 the probe index, uh, the, 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 sorry, the, 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 the slot that we're probing um, is, ha holds the key that we were looking for. So as soon as we find the slot that holds the key, um, so if it finds the key in the table, um, it should stop and return that index. Uh, but if it ever comes to an empty slot during the probe sequence, not a missing slot. So a missing slot is a deleted slot. Um, so if it ever comes to an empty slot, that means that the search failed. So um, uh, in that case, it, it's, it's not, we're not throwing an exception here. We're handling the case of a failed search um, somewhere else. So in that case, it, it should just return that empty slot, uh, which is going to, to some caller, is going to indicate that the, the um, um, the search failed, all right? So we kind of did that for one reason, to make these two pretty much the identical, we just have slightly different stopping conditions. Um, Um, let me talk a little bit then about what the difference is between the empty and the missing here, uh, just to make certain people understand that. Okay, so later on, so so after after you implement task two, um, I think we'll, we'll see if, if people agree with me or not. But but this makes it relatively easy then to implement the insert, find, and remove because you're basically reusing those two functions to implement the functionality, to insert new key value pairs, to find a, a, a value associated with the key, um, or to remove a key value pair from the hash, from our dictionary, right? So for a, um, For a closed hash table like we're doing here with a probe sequence, we have a particular problem when we're uh, deleting, removing keys from the dictionary. Um,
this problem is this. So let me, uh, I'm just going to make up a, a probe sequence here to illustrate um, the, 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 the issue that we have here. So let's say that the, that when you have a particular key, We end up with a home that has index of two. Okay. And remember for the quadratic probe sequence, the, the probe offset uh, goes something like um, two, five. Um, um, uh, let me, let me. Um, let me just bring up the. Um, file here. So, so the, the, the offset is going to be 2, 5, 10, 17, 20. Um, I probably need uh, maybe one more value, 26, right? For um, a probe sequence number of 0, 1, 2, uh, Four, five, right? So that means that um, for this particular key, we're first going to probe. Uh, um, um, so this is the offset. So the actual slot that we're going to probe is, you know, we add the home to the offset, mod by the allocation size. That gives us the actual slot. So we're going to start by probing slot four. Uh, five plus two is going to be seven. So that when we mod that, that goes back around to zero. Um, 10 plus two is 12. Um, and then when we mod that by seven, that goes around to five. Um, plus two gives uh, 19. And then when you mod by seven, uh, that goes in uh, two times again with a remainder of five. Um, so that can happen. Is that right? 14. Yeah, and then um, for 20, we go to 22, that, that goes into three, uh, you know, when we mod by seven, that goes in three times with the remainder of one. So we'll, we'll go to slot one, and then 26, and two goes 28. Um, that goes in exactly uh, four times with the remainder of zero. Okay. Um, so we have some repetitions of, of slots that we're searching uh, on the probe sequence here, but uh, it still works out here. Although also, you, know, you can see that, that we're uh, not using all of the slots yet. If we keep going, we'll eventually you know, use some of the rest of the slots in the table here. So that means, um, Let's say that we already have some values. Let's say that we're doing a, um, so, so the, the missing versus um, uh, empty mostly um, affects like when we're searching, for example. So let's say we were searching for, um, I'll just call it P, P1, right? But let's say P1, um, Let's say we had P2 um, at slot four, and we had P3 at slot zero, and then we had P1 at slot one. Right? So um, if we were doing the, the, the probe for key, you know, we, we would first end up checking here, um, and we would see that it's not the key that we were searching for. So we would go to the, our next value in our probe sequence 
So we can slide zero. That is not the one that we're searching for. So we would go to the next one, and then we would find it and return the index number. Okay. Um, likewise, if this was an unsuccessful search, let's say the key one is in the table, it would look similar when we're doing the, the probe for key. You know, we would first go here, we wouldn't find the key, but this isn't empty. So we would continue on the probe sequence. Um, then we'd go to slide zero, we wouldn't find the key we were looking for. So we'd go to the next value in the probe sequence. Uh, but here, let, let's say this is empty. Right? Um, so, so, so here, uh, if we were searching for a particular key, uh, when we got to this slot, we would see it's, it's empty. It doesn't have a valid key, right? Um, so we would stop and we would return uh, five there. But something, uh, the, the, the actual search function uh, would, would check this and see that it's not the key that we were looking for. It was actually an empty slot. So it would be able to detect that the search failed. Okay? Um, so let's see. Let's say that, that uh, we had a key four um, at slot five, um, and then we had our key one um, at slot one, okay? So now, again, if I was searching for key one, you know, I would check four, it's, it's not empty or missing, uh, but it's not the key, I would check zero, uh, and I would check five, then I would check five again, um, and then I would check one before I finally succeeded, okay? But let's say then, um, let's say somebody deletes key three, okay? So we use the, the um, um, delete method um, for task five, the remove method for task five. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to change back to the uh, to the board here. So, so we removed the, the, the uh, we used the remove method to remove uh, key three here, okay? So if we only just return that slot back to empty, specify all these other slots I hadn't specified before are, were, were marked as empty. Okay? So let's say that we remove the, the key three um, and we return the slot back to empty. The problem with just setting it back to empty, if we're using that as a stopping condition uh, for a search, is um, now anything in the probe sequence after that, we wouldn't be able to find anymore, right? Uh, so again, if I was searching for key one, and I would check here, um, that's not the key, but it's not empty. Um, so I would uh, go to slot zero, but that's empty. So we use that as an, in, as an indication that um, uh, the, the search is ended. We weren't able to find the key, but, but that's not correct. I mean, I, my key one is, is actually in there. Okay? So in order to handle that for a closed hashing table uh, scheme like this, we have to use a, a separate indicator when we remove a value to indicate that that um, this isn't the same as empty. Uh, we call that missing in this assignment. Okay, so if you are searching for a key, uh, a missing slot uh, was deleted. But there was a value there. So I, I should continue on in the probe sequence um, as if there was a value there because uh, even though the value was removed out of there, um, um, the, the value I'm actually searching for could be further on in the probe sequence. Um, so when I removed that key three, um, I would still be able to find key one correctly um, because you should only stop if you come to an empty slot when you when you're doing the probe for key. All right. Um, so again, you know, if I'm searching for key one, um, I would 
look here. That's not the key I'm looking for. So then I would look next at zero. That's not the key I'm looking for, but that's not an empty slot. So uh, it was a value that was there, but got deleted. So that means that my probe sequence, I should still continue on my probe sequence looking on. Um, so I look at five, that's not the key I'm looking for. Um, and then finally I look at one and I find the key, right? And there's the key, right? Likewise though, then um, if you're searching for um, uh, a slot where you can insert a new key value pair, you can, you can use either an empty slot or a missing slot. Um, that's fine because both of those uh, don't have value key value pairs in them anymore on the table, right? So for the probe for available slot, um, if along the probe sequence I stop at the first slot that's either empty or missing and return that value um, as the result, right? Because that that location is going to be used to insert a new key value pair um, for the table. Right. Okay. Um, then to wrap up, like I said, um, um, we'll see if 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 um, if, uh, if if you guys uh, implementing these agree with me or not. But um, these these two methods should make it relatively uh, easy to actually insert the, the real uh, public API methods um, for our uh, dictionary here, our hash implementation of a dictionary here, right? Um, so insert um, we, we are first checking, we're going to make it illegal to uh, try to insert a, a, a key value pair if there's already an existing uh, key, uh, key, val key value pair with that same key in the dictionary. So um, first use the probe for key slot to search for the key that's trying to be inserted, right? So that function, again, remember that both these functions return a slot in the hash table. So if that return slot is not empty, um, and if the key in that slot is the same as the key that we're trying to insert now, you need to throw an exception. Okay, so that's kind of a special case. We're, we're first reusing the probe for key slot to see if the um, uh, key is already in the dictionary. And if it is, we're going to throw a dictionary duplicate key uh, insertion exception. Otherwise, if you get past that, if you don't throw the exception, uh, the key is not a duplicate, so we want to insert that new key value pair uh, into the table, right? So, uh, oh, um, um, you know, so like we've used in a lot of these classes before, um, if the dictionary is full, uh, we want to grow it, okay? Oh, I don't think, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, so it might be useful to look at this method here. Um, so if you look at the grow hash dictionary, if, if needed, um, in um, our hash dictionary.cpp. Um, it does something slightly different than what the grow function was doing uh, to increase the dynamic allocation for like our lists before. So for our, our, our lists where we had an array, we only grew when the, the, array was completely full and then we doubled the size okay so we're again doubling the size here but we grow um, much earlier than we were doing before so basically we check if the size uh, is if, if it's half full so so if, if currently the size is um, less than one half of the capacity of the allocation size of the uh, table we return but if it's greater right so if we're 50 percent or more capacity, we, we grow the table, okay? We do that because that, um, we, we discussed that a little bit um, in our materials about um, hashing um, in our textbook and in our lecture videos this week, right? So you are much more likely to end up with long probe sequences, uh, thus to reduce your performance of, of your hashing down to linear time 
if the, the table, if you allow the table to become full, right? So by keeping the table always only half full and, and half empty, you're much more likely to have very short probe sequences of, of one, maybe two in length before you find the key or find the empty, uh, find an empty slot, right? Um, so that's what we're kind of doing here. So yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, after that, I mean, the real heart of like the insert is that you basically just call the probe for available slot. Um, since the table should always be like 50% empty um, or less, uh, you know, at, at 50% capacity at most, uh, there should always be an available slot. So, so this will always return a key of a slot that's either empty or missing, right? So, so basically then you're going to insert the, the new key value pair into the slot that's returned from the pro pro probe for available slot. Um, so the way you should do this is you should create a new instance of a key value pair uh, by using the, the, the constructor method of the key value pair and then assign this into the hash table at that particular slot number, okay? So um, if you didn't follow that, so you know the key value pair is just a class. So you can use the, the constructor, this one, to, cr to create a new key value pair with a, to, with a, a particular key and value as the as you know that you initialize that key value pair um, object with right um, so so again i'm just kind of writing this code here but um so um So you can just create a, a new instance directly like this. So you can do something like say, um, all right, so new, new key value pair um, here is an actual instance. We're gonna be uh, initializing it with, with the key and value that was, was given into the insert, right? And then this, so it's a new instance of a, of a key value pair object, and we can insert that into our hash table. So, something like that should work, okay? So, so the slot would be returned from calling the probe for available slot. So that should give you a slot that's currently either empty or missing. And now we're going to re reassign that value. Oh, um, um, actually, we, we probably can't use equal. So again, um, we should be using a member method. So um, Um, no, I take that back. So, so probably this would be the better way to do it, the, the way I had it. So, um, right. So, I mean, you know, the, each entry in the hash table is of the key value pair type, right? So, if I create a new one, I can reassign any of those slots to a new uh, pair here. And, and this isn't going to be missing anymore. So, this is going to have a, a, an actual key uh, and value um, assigned to it, right? So something like that should work to um, insert a new key value pair into the table at a particular slot. All right. So that was an insert. Um, Oh, um, yeah, so as a note here, there is actually a call, because if you grow the table, you have to reinsert the values from the old um, array into the new array. 
it's when, when, when it, it, the hash table grows, right? And we reuse insert, but that has to be commented out until you actually implement it. Um, so once you've got your insert uh, working, you should um, uncomment that. So if, if you go back and look at your um, grow hash table, if, if uh, grow hash dictionary, if needed, um, down here somewhere, uh, if we grew the table, we're going to reinsert the values from the old hash table um, into the, uh, the, the the new um, hash table. So, so yeah, you know, once you get your insert working, uh, don't forget to go back and uncomment that so that the grow function uh, will reinsert the values correctly into the hash table. Um, all right, so fine um, is actually simpler. Um, maybe I should have done fine before insert. Um, um, so for fine, uh, I guess yeah, both fine and remove are relatively simpler than the insert. Um, I guess we kind of need to have the insert though working as soon as possible so that we can have the, the dictionary growing method uh, working fully, right? So. That's one reason why we kind of want to do it before these others, most likely. So, um, so for fine, you're going to be using the probe for the key slot, and remember that's going to return a slot, um, and and that slot is either going to be have a valid key, um, or it's going to be empty. So if if the slot um, is like an empty slot, it means that the search failed. So you should um, throw a dictionary key not found exception. If it's not an empty slot, um, it should be the key that you asked to search for, although you might want to check that kind of as a double check. So, so if it returns a non-empty slot, it should be returning the slot that has the key that you, that you asked um, to search for in the probe for key slot. Right? Uh, the, the, so fine is supposed to actually return the value associated with that key. So, so you'll, you'll want to access the value out of that, that hash table slot and return that value. Um, as the result of, of the find function. Um, and then remove um, is almost identical to find. Um, should have the same uh, um, signature, the same uh, API. Um, so it returns a value. So you know, so when we remove, we, we, we end up returning the value of the key that we remove. That's just the way that the API is API is often defined for the um, for a dictionary like this. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically, you're going to be doing the same thing as fine, but after you return, um, I mean, you should still throw the exception if you try to remove um, a, a key that's that's not found. Same as in step two here. But then at step three, um, um, uh, you, you need to uh, set that slot to be missing because you're actually removing it from the table. So you can call the set missing function to do that. But then likewise, you're going to re return that value uh, for the, the that you found um, as the result of coin. All right, and um, yeah, that's it. I think that's, that's all I wanted to talk about here. So hopefully that um, um, will uh, help you. I mean, the, I definitely the most difficult part is task two. Once you get those working, um, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know if this will be true for everybody, but um, you know, you're going to be reusing those two methods that you implement in task two that basically implement. Um, a, a probe sequence for the closed hashing table. But then you reuse those to do the actual public methods for the insert, find, and remove, right? Especially find and remove are relatively simple. Um, so. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, as usual, keep sending me questions as you're working on things, um, and I will see you guys later.